Hi, I'm Kent. So this is my uh, new old Scut kiln. And uh, last time I did a walkthrough and showed that the inside of the kiln is actually in really good shape. Um, here I've just stacked it up um, to work on it. These sections actually normally align. These are all the electronics that uh, drive the elements. So the only thing that was obviously broken on the kiln was the lid support. Um, however, these are very old and I uh, don't really trust them. Um, I'm worried that they all need to be replaced. The other thing is the kiln sitter here, I think is missing a couple of pieces. Um, I'll show how this works in a minute, um, but is uh, relies upon having a cone and the cone actually bending to turn the kiln off when it comes to temperature. I wanna replace this with a thermocouple um, and some modern uh, electronics um, so that I can control the temperature more precisely. So I know this wants to be replaced. Um, maybe this does too. So the other thing that's a problem is this is a very old plug. Um, the way this is set up, I looked it up online, it's a NEMA plug, but uh, these here are the two legs for the 240 volts and actually the neutral is tied to the case. So that's actually kind of dangerous. I want to replace this with a modern plug um, that actually has a proper ground in it. The question is, what else of this should be replaced? So first, let's open the kiln sitter. Um, I think this is uh, an interesting thing to see how it, how it worked. So this here is a lever that goes inside and inside there are a couple of pegs that actually hold a cone that goes across the top and as the cone melts, it actually bends and the lever goes from this position to this. So when the cone is in place, this is pushed down on the outside and captures uh, this piece here. There's a little button here that triggers a contactor and as the cone melts, its slat will gradually, gradually move. And eventually it trips and falls and that releases the contactor. So it actually just cuts power to the whole kiln. This here is a timer. Uh, looking online, this is basically a backup timer. The timer is a, is a safety so that if the kiln you know, went for you know, 15 hours or whatever um, without the cone actually triggering the turn off, that's a backup. Let's open this up and see what's inside. There are four screws here. Okay, that releases the panel and it comes out. All right, so here is inside of the panel. You can see here is the timer um, and it's wired up uh, to these two leads here. The, this is the contactor itself. Um, you can see in there, so when it's closed and you push the button, it actually there are springs and it latches and that actually closes the contacts. So it closes the contacts between uh, these leads here and this is the power coming in and out. And when the lever gets released and hits, the spring-loaded action actually physically disconnects it. So this is basically an electromechanical switch. That's how the power gets turned off to the whole kiln. So very old school. In modern kilns, uh, this is actually controlled with a, a thermal couple and some relays that turn off the kiln. So I wanna replace this. So while I'm in here, uh, this is the lever that goes up and down. This actually goes all the way through the bricks and there's a tube. And uh, in modern kilns, so this lever, this is actually where the thermal couple goes. So I'll, I'll swap this out and put the thermal couple in here. So all of this can go away. Um, all I really need is access to this hole for the thermal couple. Um, the contactor itself will be replaced with relays. Next, I'll take off the cover for the center box. This is where the power comes in and then gets distributed to the others. So this is the more interesting one. All right, so here's inside the control box. So the power comes from outside. So these gray wires, um, there's a plug on the top and there's another one on the bottom where power gets distributed up and down. There's a switch right here that you can barely see um, that controls the power to the two sets of elements. So here's one set of elements and this is the other set of elements. Uh, one thing to note right away is that some of these wires look like they're in really tough shape. Um, so that's not good. This piece right here is completely broken apart. So power should be coming out here, but it's not. So this definitely needs to be replaced. So if we go back to the wiring diagram, we can see what's going on. So power's coming in. It goes through this conduit here over to the switch that gets turned on and off by the, the cone falling or the timer as a backup. Power then comes back in and it goes to a couple different places. Um, this is the switch right here that turns the elements off, turns one set on or turns both of them on, uh, depending on if it's medium or high. This here is the plug going to the bottom and this here is the plug going to the top that is broken. Uh, that's definitely very dangerous. So that's this box. Um, I suspect the other two are probably in very similar condition. So let's open those up. All right, so here are the pairs of elements coming out of the top section of the kiln. 
This one's different. There's actually these screw connectors here, which is awesome. It means replacing these wires will be way easier. Um, here's the switch poking off the side. Again, that just turns on pairs of elements. And here's the plug. This is the one that was actually broken on the inside of, uh, of the middle box. And yeah, this, this terminal here looks in really bad shape. I'm guessing it's been uh, in bad shape for a while. So this will definitely need to be need to be replaced. The problem is this connection here between the top section and the middle section with these plugs is both mechanical and electrical. So if the rings are offset just by a little as you're dropping the top ring onto the middle ring, you can imagine these would get bent out of shape very, very easily. So while I'm here, I think I just take this whole box off, which looks like I can do by just taking out these screws. One of the things I've learned in reading is that the elements become extremely brittle, so you actually don't want to move them unless they're hot. So I want to make sure not to break off the elements as I undo this. Okay, so here is the top control box. So these were screwed in here, so I should be able to replace the screws and just connect back there with some rings, which is great. Um, means that connection should be relatively easy. Here they're crimped directly on, which is going to be much more annoying to replace. All right, and this is the bottom box. I assume it's going to be very, very similar to the top one. So here's the bottom box. It turns out it's actually more similar to the middle. So instead of disconnecting it here, I think I'm going to disconnect it down at the switch. There was one screw I could remove that actually ties the two center legs together. Top and bottom were crimped on, so I just cut those, cut those wires, and then was able to remove this box. All right, so I've removed the top and the bottom boxes. I think I want to remove this one too. So what is the plan of attack? These wires are really crusty. So I'm going to have to replace them, but I think, like the bottom box, I'm just going to try and remove them from the switch first. So there's one screw here that I can take out. So that releases the middle elements. Problem is the others are crimped on, so I'm going to just cut those. All right, so this wire is very brittle. All right, so now we've disconnected the box from the elements. I think the next thing to do is probably to remove it from the kiln sitter. We are going to cut this off. So those two free that part of the kiln sitter. That one. And there's one more down here. Okay, those four wires free the kiln sitter. So now there's a piece of conduit. Awesome. This top plug is really in bad shape. So here's the power cord coming in. The neutral line actually is connected to the case, which is very dangerous. There's also a pilot light here. So I suspect what I'm going to do is remove all this stuff. Um, I need a new cord anyways. I want to replace the switches with relays. Um, so I think this all goes away. The connection to the kiln sitter I will use. This is probably where the wires for the thermal couple uh, will go. I don't think I'll need anything else in the kiln sitter. All right, so the only thing left is the kiln sitter. So I think I'm going to... I, think I will take out this piece of conduit. These wires I have no interest in saving, but I think I can just pull them through. All right, and there's the, the kiln sitter. Model LT3. All right, so here's the kiln all taken apart. Um, the kiln sitter I removed. There's still the lever. I'll need to pull that out and replace it. Um, I might need to take this box off to do that. I haven't looked. All of the control panels in the middle that used to stack and plug together, I removed. Um, these all used to line up and they would plug into each other vertically, um, but those connectors are in bad. I'm glad I took that apart. There's definitely a problem there. The kiln would not have worked. Uh, the top here actually has these screw terminals for the elements, which is awesome. Uh, these bottom two sections, uh, not so much. These wires here are really nasty. Um, I think the bottom ones are probably okay. I might leave those as opposed to messing with them. So I think the next steps are going to be starting work on the new power system. I'll need to wire the elements up to relays, replace uh, these old wires, 
with new uh, heat shielded wire. And then I will replace uh, this lever here with the thermocouple. With that, I will then basically have a new kiln from an electronics perspective. It should act much like a 1027 kiln. We'll use, to, use the thermocouple to digitally turn the different elements on and off and have a programmatic control over the firing. I hope this teardown was useful. Um, I'm definitely not an expert in this, so this is me just showing you my journey. Um, so take all of this with a, a grain of salt. If you have any questions about any of this, uh, please let me know. Thanks.